Damon, this is a tornado on the ground. And it's, it's very powerful. Take cover! When you live in Tornado Alley, you can never underestimate the potential for destruction. But lately, the deadliest tornadoes are not happening in Tornado Alley. They're happening in places like Mississippi and Alabama. And it was just December when a tornado slammed into Kentucky and led to 93 deaths. So I just drove up here to Oklahoma because I've been seeing these stories that say things like, why the famous Tornado Alley is on the move. And I wanna know, first of all, is that true? And if it is true, why would something like that be happening? Okay, we're um, just outside of Enid, Oklahoma right now. Well, what we're trying to do is catch a tornado in the act of forming. Dr. Howie Bluestein is a professor at the University of Oklahoma School of Meteorology. With his mobile radar unit, he's researching why tornadoes form. How about him? Is he noticing a shift in Tornado Alley? There have been some years when I first lived here when if you wanted to see a tornado, you went to southwestern Oklahoma an awful lot. And there have been a number of years where we just haven't done that. So does that mean anecdotally, things have, you've seen some kind of change? I've seen some kind of change, but then I've also seen it change back. All right, let's get to the basics, like the definition of Tornado Alley. It stretches from North Texas up through Oklahoma, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Bluestein says there are a few reasons that everyone is so aware of Tornado Alley. First, there's visibility. A lot of Tornado Alley is on the flat plains without many trees, buildings, or people. So tornadoes here are easy to see and to study. Then there's reliability. Most tornadoes here happen around the same time every year, mid-March through mid-June, and they're usually on the ground the same time of day, between 5 and 9 p.m. But popular culture is so focused on Tornado Alley, experts say we tend to be biased against another major tornado hotspot. There are other parts of the country uh, that can also get a lot of tornadoes. Uh, one of them is in part of the southeastern part of the United States. Some people have called it Dixie Alley. Dixie Alley, have you heard that one before? It's roughly around Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. And compared to Tornado Alley, there's a few reasons it doesn't really capture our imagination. First, the visibility here is worse. Tornadoes are often obscured by rain or hidden behind trees and hills, so they're harder to see and to study. And compared to Tornado Alley, there's also less reliability. Dixie Alley, there isn't really a specific tornado season or a time of day that tornadoes happen. So this was one of the Dorothys from the movie, for Twister, from... Right. <laughs> Don't touch the props. <laughs> Remember that article about Tornado Alley moving? Well, it's based on research co-written by this guy, Dr. Harold Brooks. He's a senior scientist at the National Severe Storms Laboratory in Norman, Oklahoma. It seems to me that there really is a perception that, that people think that tornadoes only happen in Tornado Alley. His paper concludes, since 1979, there's a 10% decreased chance of experiencing a tornado within the footprint of Tornado Alley and a 10% increased chance within the footprint of Dixie Alley. So the tendencies are changing a little, but that doesn't mean that Tornado Alley is just picking up and moving to the east. And one more thing, the formation of tornadoes is closely linked with the potential for thunderstorms. Check out the purple on this map from a group called Climate Central. It shows an increase in thunderstorm potential in the east. The deep brown shows a decrease in that potential around the area of Tornado Alley. It appears to be an environmental change. What does that mean? That means that the frequency of environments that support tornadoes have increased over the last 40 to 50 years in the Mid-South region, and they've decreased somewhat in South Texas and West Texas. The big question we get asked then is, why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's, 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 it's very tempting to say that it's a result of, of climate change. Climate change. The world is full of evidence that shows how climate change makes extreme events like hurricanes and heat waves more intense. Scientists make those connections by tapping into a long history of records that can go back hundreds or thousands of years. But Brooks says when it comes to tornadoes, there's only a short history of record keeping with the most reliable data only going back 40 years. So it's likely 
that it's re that it's a result of changes in in large scale conditions, but we don't have we don't have nearly as complete of link as we do with some other things. You need a very very long period of time to know whether or not well is this rising trend just part of the cycle naturally that goes up and down, but the period is very long, or is it real? And so, I don't know. So is Tornado Alley on the move? Well, something's going on. Scientists have documented changes both in where tornadoes occur and the conditions needed for them to form. But is this a permanent change? Is it a short-term trend? Is it climate change? The answer is, we don't have enough information to know. I'm David Schechter reporting.